or you sponsor or you try to get B1 visa because that might lead to other questions like, well, maybe you do really want to stay in the U.S. forever. Maybe a better answer for that person would be, when I get my green card, it's going to be through the consulate over here. I'm not going to do any change of status, adjustment of status over there. I, I know exactly what I'm doing here. I'm going to come home at the end of my assignment, and here's proof. Here's my return trip ticket. You know, Here's all my itinerary. This is my employer. I've been to the U.S. before under a different visa, and I left on time. See, I'm a good boy. All of these things. You can prepare them. Well, they will even ask you, because today uh, with uh, all the data integrated worldwide, there can be adequate uh, uh, information available with them about your past experience. So uh, they can ask you about your previous, if you have violated any previous US immigration laws. So the best thing is, as people handling the travel desk and immigration desk in your respective organization, you have to ensure that, you know, prepare them for these questions and even what to say, uh, shortlist people. If you have people who have violated such uh, rules, better not to even forward their application to the, submit their application to the uh, US consul. Yeah, this was one other area. If there's family members for this person in the US, that might be a, another issue that you have to explain away. Um, because again, that might look like they have ties to the US strong enough that they might just want to hang out there when they realize it's nice weather and you know there's a Pizza Hut and things like that on every corner. Just a question. Yep, yeah. yep. Normally people tend to hide the fact that you know their sisters or brothers or some relatives are there in the US. The question is if anybody any of your relatives or anybody's there, they try to hide the fact that they say no. Yeah, bad idea. Yeah. I think it's better to tell the truth and exactly. just explain my family is there, uh, but I'm here, I'm happy here. I like my job here. I'm only on assignment for this purpose. You know, those kinds of things. What What if they sponsor you for a green card? Well, if they do down the road someday, I don't know. You know, that may come, but I don't. I don't intend on doing that now. I'm only going for this assignment. You know, be honest. I think is the key because later they could ask another question. You get into it. They'll get you. You know, they'll get you. How do they really investigate? Do they really investigate and know that you have any? I don't think they do, but it is conceivable. You never know what they're going to do. I mean, I would go with the idea that they know everything. And that way, you're not going to be, you know, surprised. They will have to go down, you know, higher with the hierarchy and see, you know, how you're going to do it. Yeah, very unlikely that they would ever do that. But one interesting thing is, down the road when they apply for a green card, or down the road if they apply for another immigration benefit that requires them to say if they're married or if they have children or family in the U.S. and they say something different, now there's two different records. And if it ever comes up again, and they look like they were lying and now there's fraud and there's a whole lot of problems. Waivers. Has anybody would like to share some of the good or bad experiences in this particular visa during your uh, yes, but asking a question. question. Yeah. Uh, in most cases, a person gets a B1 visa but does not travel immediately. Now, when he does travel at a later point of time, say after three months or six months or whatever, what are the documents that need to be produced at the port of entry to convince that uh, the reason why he's not used the visa for the last uh, six months or seven months or whatever? I, I would bring the visa application package that was submitted to the consulate, at least a copy. And if it's old by that time, I would bring fresh documents basically saying the same thing. New pay stubs, I'm still employed. Um, new letter from the employer in, inviting for this purpose. Certainly if the purpose of the visit was to come for a conference that has already started and ended, now you have a problem. You know, something could be wrong and maybe you need to explain that or explain why you know something has changed and give that to the officer when they come in. Normally they do a proactive visa, they get a visa before, maybe with no intent, just to get the visa and keep it ready. And when they travel, the purpose will be totally different. Right. So in that case, I guess the only the invite letter from the employer will help with the immigration. In most cases, you would not be asked specifically, I think, entering like, okay, why did you apply for this visa? What's going on? That's going to be an exception. Just but it could happen. What's that? Yes, the invite will help. A new invite letter, yeah. if it's been something that was done a long time in advance. Uh, in spite of invite letter, there was a question. Uh -huh. Immigration, passports. 
Yeah. Speak up, yeah. Be a bit louder. Yeah. Yeah. The port of entry last month. Uh, visa was been done six months back, and he was traveling last week, uh, last month, sorry. And we have got a new, got a new invitation letter stating that our purpose is going, and still is being asked mm -hmm. several questions. It's been held up for almost one and a half hour. Wow. Uh, yeah, I think. Um, it depends on the immigration officer again. What's that? Again, it depends on yeah. the immigration officer. It really depends. There's a human element that is subjective there, uh, a bad day, uh, you know, a headache, something could happen to that person, it could be sick, it could just be an angry person, you know. So you don't know what you're going to get, but even if they detain you, if you're truthful and you have good documents, you should get through the process successfully. Yeah, if we yeah. went through successfully because yeah. we already uh, passed those information through the railway reservation system, the contact mm -hmm. details. And we have given this information to our uh, managers over there. Um, the immigration officer has called them up and rechecked whether this is or not. Yeah, it's impossible sometimes to avoid every every one of them. But certainly a, a fresh letter, fresh pay stubs, documents. You know, sometimes too I've seen clever tricks from immigration where they come and they'll say, let me see your business card. Now, if the business card has some different title than what is in the uh, invitation letter, or something is inconsistent, oh, your office is in Delhi. This says you work in, you know, Bangalore. But first of all, we won't, uh, no, we won't suggest employees. If he has a visa from other company, we won't suggest that he goes with the visa. Yeah, no, what I'm yeah. saying is, like, if an employee is promoted, yeah. If the employee job title on his business card or her business card is different than the what. That's a trick.